Hey everybody, Dr. Estes here, and I'm making a quick video to help you out with the most recent homework. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So on the last problem, you have to integrate this kinematic differential equation. It's a first order differential equation, and it can look like a little bit of a bear, but it's not that bad. The thing that can make it a little tricky is you have measured data from a file that feeds into this differential equation as we solve it. So like U, V, W, we have sensor data of these variables that feeds into the differential equation. Um, this is especially tricky maybe if you're using ODE45 to solve this differential equation. So I wanna show you some tricks with ODE45 so you can get this thing done. So to do this, I made a little example problem. This is also a first order differential equation and we have three states here. I give initial conditions for the differential equation and uh, in here we have a variable V, we have a variable P. Now these V and P, we're going to assume that we have measurements of these variables that were sampled at 100 hertz. And so the question is going to be, huh, how do I substitute this data into this differential equation? So how about we go over to MATLAB and let's start building the ODE function for this and then show how to deal with this. All right, so what I want to do is we're going to make an ODE function. So boom, function, that's how you start it. And I'm going to say DX equals my ODE function and um, typically we have like T and X and let's just start building this function here maybe I can pull this over here pull this up actually I want to switch sides with these okay okay you can kind of see what I'm doing here okay good so we have to enter this differential equation in here. So maybe I'll say DX, I'll just make like a placeholder, like it'll be a column. So DX1 is going to be this equation, minus 2 times X1 plus V. Okay, so we have to pass in V. We'll come back to that in a second dx2 is minus x2 plus x1 squared plus p. Okay, there's another variable. Oh, we should close these with semicolons. And then we got one more line. dx3 is minus x3. Okay, so what you can do if you want to pass in some extra variables to this ODE function, you can tag them on right here. So if we have some measured data for V and P, we can put them in. Um, so let's, let's load in this data that see what it, to see what it looks like. So I made like a sample data file and I'm just gonna make a fresh file here to show what this data looks like. So I'm just making a totally different function over here. And we're actually gonna call that ODE function from this file that we're making right here. So this is important. So let's make this data. I saved it up in a mat file that I call sample data.mat. So what's in this file? It has time data. So I'll just locate, don't worry too much about this. This is just accessing the data within the file. So there's data that is time related. Then we have V and P. V is in the second column, P is in the third. So let's just plot this really quick. Let's do T data versus V data and T data versus P data. And I'll pump up the line width. We'll turn on a grid. So I'm just plotting what this data looks like. 
So we're going to have time. This is going to be in seconds. That's on the horizontal axis. Let's make a legend. So I'm plotting V and I'm plotting P as a function of time. All right, let's run this. It'll tell me to save it. So I'll say this is my file. Boom. Running it. I'll pull this graph over. All right. So the blue line is V and the orange line is P. And so this data was sampled at specific instances in time. It was once every 100 seconds, or 100 times a second, rather. Um, and we want to feed this data into the ODE function. So what I'm going to do, so when we call our ODE function, this is the standard way to do it. So we're going to call the function that we just made so we're going to use ODE 45 and we're going to go at T X um, we're going to put in the name of our ODE function which was my ODE funk ooh actually I'm going to copy all of this and I'm going to put it right here with these extra variables here now um, I'm gonna change the names of these. I'm gonna pass in this data that we loaded. So I'm gonna call it V data. I'm gonna also pass in P data. We're gonna pass in the whole file. Okay. Now the next piece is we have to solve this ODE over some time span and we have to provide some initial conditions. So, Let's say the time span is just, um, so the first number is the time that it starts at, that'll be zero. And then the second number is the end of the time span, which let's just say it's, we go to the end of our sampled time data. So this will just pick the last time from our data set. So that's as far as we're gonna go. And let's give some initial conditions. If we go back to the original problem here, we said x1 was zero, x2 was minus one, and x3 was two. So I need zero, minus one, and two. Zero, minus one, two. Okay. So I'm gonna save this. I have my time span, I have my initial conditions. I'm using OD45, I'm applying it to this function. I'm gonna pass in all of this data. All right, let's go back to our ODE function. And I'm gonna update these variables here because I'm passing in this data. Okay, here's the thing. When ODE45 when ODE is solving your differential equation, it's an adaptive step size solver, meaning it picks its own times to um, update this differential equation and it picks its own time steps. So the times are gonna be stored in this variable T and these times may not line up with the times in the original data. So here's the tricky thing, like when I plug in V or P here, I want this to be the data at the time that my ODE45 solver is actually at, at this instant. So this is the tricky part. Okay, so to solve this, we're gonna use interpolation. And I'm just realizing in order to interpolate, we're gonna have to pass in a third thing. We're gonna have to pass in the original times from the data. And so we're gonna have to go back to our other file and add that here as well. So now we're, we're actually gonna pass in three extra things. The time from the data, the V from the data, the P from the data. Okay. Now here's how you use interpolation. So I want V at this specific time that the ODE45 function is using. So at the top of my code, I'm gonna say V 
I'm going to interpolate the original data set, which is T and V data. And I want to estimate the value of V at the current time T that this ODE45 function is using. Okay, and the same thing with P. I'm going to try to grab the value of P that corresponds to the current time that ODE45 is using. So if you use this, it'll look at the full data set and then it'll scope out what data we want at this specific time. And I'm calling those just V and P here, and then they'll get substituted in right here. Okay, we gotta save this function. Uh, so it'll be called my ODE function. You have to save this file in the same folder as this um, other file that we made. Where is that? Wait, where the heck did that thing go? What'd you guys do with my file? What the heck I did there? Um, what the heck? Apparently I like deleted the other file that I was making. Guys, I'm insane. I don't know what I just did. I found the other file though. Um, these two files that we've been making, they have to be in the same folder. Okay, so now I think this should work. It's gonna call our ODE function, it's gonna plug in this data and then we're gonna be interpolating stuff. Let's plot the results after we integrate. So you could go plot TX, we could pump up the line width again, we could turn on the grid. So we'll have time on the horizontal axis and let's put in a legend because we're going to have x1 x2 x3 that we solved for and let's run this actually i'm going to make a new figure here let's run it let's run it let's run it okay this Okay, the original data here on the left, and then here is the result of integrating that differential equation where we fed in V and P. Um, I hope this helps you guys out. So just like, I'll show you these two codes again. This is the main file. We load in the data. We just plotted to see what the data looked like. We called our ODE function and then we plotted that result. Our ODE function file is right here. So we added in this for bringing in that data. We had to interpolate the data right up here and then we plug in those interpolated points into the ODE function. I hope this helps you guys out. Um, good luck to you, bye bye.